Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at an invasive species of wasp called the Polistes dominula, also called the European paper wasp. And the reason they call these paper wasps is because they create kind of a paper mache like substance out of wood fiber and their own saliva. And they use that mixture of wood pulp to build their nests. We're going to show you what it looks like when these wasps collect wood fiber and we'll show you how they use that fiber in the construction process while they're building the cells on their nest. Not every wasp builds colonies, but those that do make colonies will typically do that this way by collecting plant fibers, tree fiber, wood fiber, and creating a paste with which to construct their nest. And when that paste dries out, what you have is a very lightweight but very sturdy nest in which they can raise their young. Wasps will use multiple parts of their mouth for this process and also their antenna and also their forearms. So it, it's quite a complex process, this collection of wood fiber. What they do is they'll begin to moisten the wood that they're working on with their saliva. The enzymes in the saliva help break down the cellulose in the fiber and they'll use their antennas to help give them direction as they move their mandibles do most of the pulling and chewing. It's the tube-like structures that you see here beneath the mandibles also are involved with the sensory input required to do this work. And then they'll tear this fiber away from the wood and they'll chew it up and they'll use their forearms to help them create a small round ball of this material that they can then fly back to the nest with to build it. This footage was shot in slow motion, of course, but they can actually do this process very quickly, and we'll show you some of that footage later on. So as you see here, she finishes this one piece and she's able to pull it away from the wood, and then she continues on to look for more fiber next to it, and she'll continue with this process until she's got enough material to make a good fiber ball of putty to roll up and fly back to the nest. And we'll stay with actual speed here for a few minutes to give you an idea of how quickly they do this process and what it actually looks like if you come upon one in the wild and you'll find out what they're doing. You can see them on patio decks and fences and phone poles and anywhere there's really good weathered uh, ultraviolet damaged wood. And this will give you an idea of what's happening while they're doing this. They're not eating the wood they're simply collecting fiber. But it does, from a distance, look like they're actually feeding on the wood, which obviously they do not do. As you may know, there are some species of insects, like termites, for example, who actually feed on the cellulose in plant fibers and wood and paper. They can actually break that cellulose down into nutrients that they can feed on. Now, that process is not what's happening when you see a wasp gathering fiber. Wasps are strictly interested in cellulose from wood fiber and plant material so that they can break it down and use it to construct their homes. And here we transition back to regular speed. So again, you can see the contrast in the slow-mo versus regular speed. This is usually a very efficient process. Wasps are sort of pre-programmed to operate in warp speed. They do everything quickly. They fly quickly. They forage for wood quickly, they feed quickly, they feed their larvae quickly. All of this is done with amazing efficiency. This seems especially true with the invasive species like the Polistes dominula here, and of course also the Vespula germanica, which is the German yellow jacket. These invasive species are just built to survive, and they have an incredible amount of efficient behaviors that just seem to be a little bit better at survival in any environment than our native species of wasps. And that's a problem in North America because they are displacing a lot of our native species uh, simply because of their amazing survival skills. It's not their fault they didn't ask to come here, but when they got here, boy did they take over some of the range that would have been for our native species. So in these next few clips, you're gonna see when the wasp comes back from foraging for wood, how it uses that wood fiber to then begin to repair and build out the cells on the nest. You'll see here there's a larva standing by in one of the cells that's becoming mature and will soon be weaving a silk cap to begin the pupation process, but for now it's still an open cell. And what the wasp will do is they will work on these cell walls and they will extend the cell walls so that they're tall enough to fit the pupating larva. 
and you'll find that the larva will grow into a full adult size wasp and they're going to need room to do that so what you'll see is the cell wall will be extended as that process happens to make it long enough to match an adult size wasp and once the adult wasp has pupated and removed itself from the cell and is now out in the world then the foundress or the queen of the nest will lay a new egg in that cell and it will already be big enough for a wasp to develop in from egg all the way up to pupating adult but it will constantly be under the repair and improvement process through foraged wood pulp that comes back to the nest from other foragers and they work together to keep the nest in good shape and construct it properly anytime there's a area of the nest that's either broken down or damaged or worn out it'll be repaired with the new wood fibers brought back so as you can see we're going back and forth between regular speed and slow motion the slow motion gives you excellent detail and plenty of time to take in the the finer points of this process but the the regular speed footage is interwoven here just to give you an idea of how efficiently they operate you can check out our other videos to look at some of the other wasp species that do this same sort of process to build their nests out uh, we have some of them that you can see from the very beginning of a nest being built others from a more mature nest being built and maintained so have a look if you're interested in some of that other footage one of the things that always strikes me when i look at this process is that these wasps are fully able to create perfect hexagonal shaped cells every single time with no tools no measuring devices no nothing their antenna as you will see here feeds them a ton of information they're very sensitive organs and the antennas themselves give them enough input along with their mouth parts and their legs to understand exactly where they are in this process for each cell and they can make each one identical over and over and over again dozens and dozens of times it's a pretty amazing process and the input they receive from their organs is uh, the reason they're able to do this and if you look at the sculpting process itself they're able to squeeze all that wood pulp between the mandibles in the perfect thickness in the perfect direction in the perfect shape as they go along it's one of those wonders of nature that insects that we consider to be lower forms of life with less intellect and less capability and less understanding and less consciousness and all of that are still able to pull this off and it seems to be instinctual behavior that they understand how to do when they're born i'm sure there's some learned behavior as well other adult wasps are doing this all around them throughout their egg larval and pupation development so there must be some of that that rubs off but generally this is all instinctual and it's built in another interesting factor about this material they use to build their paper nests is that combined with their enzymes and their saliva and their regurgitated fluids that they use to make the pulp to construct these nests there is a built-in mold resistance a built-in heat regulatory system where the thermoregulation of the nest is helped by the way they construct these nests and by the material that they use uh, light plays a factor in the cells and the way light comes through these walls and how all of this works together to make the perfect environment to raise their young it's a pretty amazing process overall and it reminds me of how human beings will forage trees themselves and get lumber and build their homes and how all of this is connected to preserving the environment and a lot of what we do here at green wasp removal is encourage people to understand nature understand those connections understand the similarities in life forms understand the interdependence that we have for our own survival on all things natural trees plants oxygen other forms of life insects all the way up to the more highly developed forms of mammals we're all in this thing together and if we don't figure out how to deal with conserving our biosphere and everything in it and protecting that above all else then we're lost we're done and all of us are going to suffer and eventually go extinct 
unless we get a handle on how to preserve our biosphere and everything in it. So on that note, let's remind people that poisoning our environment, dumping toxins into any part of our biosphere from the natural environment around you to your property to your home, any toxins in that environment are a bad idea, period. And if you can eliminate a wasp nest that has to go, it's invasive species, it's stinging your kids or your pets, or it's causing you a problem, you can call a company like us to come and pull that out of there in a way that's environmentally responsible, does not use any toxic poisons at all, no matter what, and we get the job done for you in a way that preserves the environment and all of our collective health. For those of you who can do this process on your own without the help of a company like us, we encourage you to try that. Do it safely. Protect yourselves from stings. Protect yourselves from any of the issues that might happen when you're dealing with removing any insect that can hurt you. But do try to give it a shot because you may find that you're able to do this on your own. And we love it. That's part of the knowledge sharing that we do here is to give you the tools and the knowledge to understand how to do this, how to do it properly, and how to do it efficiently, and get it done. Another thing we like to remind people of when it comes to wasps is that for some reason everybody seems to be able to understand we need to protect the bees of the world because we're losing our bee pollinators at an alarming rate worldwide. And this has been going on for several years now. And people are becoming aware that you don't just kill bees. You try to save them if you can and relocate them and that kind of thing. Call a beekeeper and have them maybe take them into a hive arrangement, that kind of thing. Well, for some reason, most of the world still immediately kills wasps wherever they see them. They go out and buy some huge can of toxic poison and they spray that all over the place in their own living space sometimes and kill wasps without ever considering whether or not these are native species that belong here and that are important to our ecosystem without ever considering whether or not they're invasive and maybe should be eliminated but you can do that without poison you can do that in a much more natural safe and actually more efficient way than using any kind of toxics or any kind of insecticide they just don't think about these things when it comes to wasps so what we're trying to encourage you to do and what we'd like you to tell other people about is that, number one, when you assess a wasp, you want to look at it as a part of the natural environment that has an important place in the ecosystem and that you should try to conserve, number one, if it's a native species. And then number two, if you have to eliminate a wasp nest, that you do it properly and carefully and safely and responsibly without toxic poisons. So if we can just get those two messages out, then at the end of the day, we've done some good with this channel. And with your help, we've brought a message out into the world that needs to be heard. And it needs to be heard right now. There's a possibility if the bee population continues in the same rate of decline that it's been in the last few years, that wasps are going to be more and more important to this world as pollinators, as biological control agents, as the beneficial part of the ecosystem that they've always been, but a lot more so if the bees are no longer here to support them. So next time you see a wasp, or really any living being for that matter, let that thought come up in your head. What is this that I'm looking at? Is it native to this environment? Is it beneficial? Does it belong here in the ecosystem? And what can I do to preserve it? Do I need to kill this thing? Or can we get along just fine together through a little bit of shared knowledge? I think we all need to find ways to take part in the solution in small ways every day as a life habit as opposed to maybe once in a while you'll do something like send money for Earth Day to one of your favorite green foundations or whatever how about just looking at what's around you day to day and deciding hey I'm gonna do what I can to make sure this stuff stays around for the next generation there's a lot of terms thrown around these days especially on the internet especially on YouTube that I think become part of the noise if you don't really sit down and think about them. Terms like intentional living. That gets used and abused in a big way these days it, to the point where it becomes part of the noise and you just don't even think about it anymore. But at the end of the day, if everything you do is intentional, 
You don't do anything by rote habit. You don't do anything because other people do it. You don't do anything because it's expected to be done that way. You don't do anything without thinking it through from an ecologically balanced point of view. Is this action that I'm about to take or that I'm considering in line with the preservation of the ecosystem we're in, the environment we're in, the biosphere we need to protect and preserve for all life to survive on this planet? Is this action I'm going to take in line with that or not? If it's not, all we ask is that you think twice. We're not looking to fundamentally alter anybody's lives or jobs or enjoyment or any of that. We just want a little more consciousness, a little less selfishness, a little more habitual concern and consideration for your place in this world and how your impact on the rest of what lives on this planet can be a positive thing or a negative thing. Because for most of us, the great majority of the time, it's a choice. So take a look here at the movements of this wasp as it moves around the nest and navigates where the larva is located. You see it touch the larva's head there with one of its feet. And then it taps around where the larva is with its antenna. And it moves around the cell with its mouth parts and with its forelegs. Through all of this sensory input, it knows exactly where it's going and it knows exactly what to do for that nest repair and for that nest building. It's really a pretty amazing process. When you slow things down enough in this world and you enlarge the image enough to be able to actually see what's happening, you tend to be able to appreciate it a lot more. And that's a lot of what we try to do here on our channel is bring you the up close and personal touch with nature when it comes to wasps so that you can then better understand the process and better appreciate these creatures for what they are. There's something about being able to bring yourself to the level of whatever other creature you're existing with in this world that when you share that space for a period of time and in this case we're sharing the space on the top of their nest as they walk around, as they do their day-to-day -day repairs, as they do their day-to-day -day care of their young. When you bring yourself right down into this environment, it's kind of impossible to not appreciate the fellow forms of life that we share this world with. If you look at this wasp so gently just touching and checking in on the larva, it's young, it's baby if you will. It can be pretty easy to imagine a mom touching a baby in the human realm and treating it so gently and caring for it so diligently. Bottom line is, we're not that different. We all deserve respect and understanding and a chance to survive in this brutal world. Spend a minute just to observe what's around you today. Just take a moment to take it all in and just sit with it for a minute. It's almost always worth the time and the effort to just be part of what's here. Not dominate, control, or destroy what's here, but just be part of it. See how that feels for a while. We appreciate you being here with us today. That brings this video to a close. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing today, we wish you peace of mind and spirit. Have a good one.